Welcome to the Kingdom Project Podcast. I am your host, Marcus Hall. And this is uh, a, a new little thing I would like to try to do. And just to, like, to give you guys a little um, scriptural study. Think of it as a drive through Bible study, if you will, to give a little bit more insight into the text and to, uh, to understand it and have a good interpretation and understanding of what is going on. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this more. I'm going to try to put out more uh, content on the, on the episode in between the bigger episodes. And this was one of my ideas. So I want to do that. And I want to talk about um, the, the uh, traditions uh, traditions of men, traditions and commandments is the thing that I want to touch upon in this one. And this is going to be out of Mark chapter 7. I've touched upon this before in an episode. I thought I would just go um, and just explore it the rest of the way so you would know exactly what is going on and in the gospels and you would have a better understanding of the pharisees and the scribes and understand that they weren't just i mean they're hypocrites but they're complete rank heretics as well and this is why they wanted to kill jesus and why they rejected him and also it it sh- it should give you a better understanding um uh, <laughs> on why discernment is good and knowing your stuff is is good as is too uh so um mark 7 um in the esv um jesus has just walked on water he's just healed the sick um the the last the last verse in in uh, chapter 6 is and everywhere he came in villages cities or countryside they laid the sick in the marketplace and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment and as and as many as touched it were made heal heal well <laughs> sorry um so um if you've listened two past episodes you will know these were people who understood who jesus was he came he was the messiah he had fulfilled he was fulfilling the prophecies the messianic prophecies to touch his fringe they would know they would have that uh, they would have that scripture that um in his uh wing he had healing in his wings or in his feathers uh, that was a symbolic language that he would be wearing uh, something with fringes and they could touch that and be healed with their faith. So it goes in Mark 7. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. Okay, so now we're getting in uh, three and uh, four here, which is in parentheses. So it may or may not have been in the majority of manuscripts. It could have been added later. And doesn't always mean that it's not part of what we consider scripture. Um, The only one thing I would say in in the, the Gospels that we have is the long ending um the long ending of mark um which is not in the majority of of manuscripts at all that long ending um it talks about the uh the yeah the they'll pick up serpents with their hands and they'll drink deadly poison and all that um everything from 9 verse 9 to the re- the end of chapter 16 in Mark um, is the long ending of Mark, and it's probably um, it's just the earliest manuscripts do not include it, so it's not really counted as scripture. So those are usually in brackets or double brackets. Sometimes you have stuff in, in uh, parentheses. This here is in parentheses, so um, I would say it's just more of explanation. I've not looked at my Bible in this version to see what parentheses mean. Um, 
I'm rabbit trailing, so let me get to it. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches even, (laughs) their furniture. Wow. And then it says, And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do you why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with dirty hands, defiled hands? And he said to them, This is Jesus. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the traditions of men. And and then he goes on to say, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God. In order to establish your tradition, for Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from from me is korban, that is, given by God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and many such things you do. And then he goes on to talk about what really defiles a person. You know, it's, it's what comes out. Um, uh, it's the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Okay. So what, what's he, what's he, what's he getting at here? Do, do you, do you guys understand what, uh, the t- tradition of the elders um, was. Um, well, um, let me tell you what it was. <laughs> um, but first, the, the, the Pharisees are hypocrites. They're heretics because their actions are external. It does not come from their hearts, uh, which means they are far from God. And their teachings are not from God because they reflect the, the tradition of men. So rejecting the commandment of God is not only um, our traditions are ineffective for cleansing our hearts, right? They actually will lead to a disregard of uh, God's word. So uh, the, the, the problem of this is, it's just, uh, dirty hands does not, you know, or clean hands does not equal a clean heart. You can do all sorts of sorts of rituals um, and do all sorts of of th- things like cleansing and washing yourself over and over again, but you inwardly, inside, can still be dirty. You are not cleansed. You have not received a new heart. You are still the same. You can fake it all you want on the outside, but God knows what is going on on the inside. So the the issue is the a, a dirty or a defiled heart is much deeper than any of us really assume, especially the Pharisees. Um, it's more serious than any sort of ceremonial thing or uh, impurity or uh, whatever. The core problem of it is what resides in the heart. So it's not the things that go into you, all right, but things that come out and throughout scripture, the heart refers to the, the center of us, of our being, including the mind and the will and emotions, which, you know, I mean, you can get into the dichotomy, trichotomy argument, but I'm not going there at this moment. So uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, the traditions of elders is known as the Talmud. That's what Jesus is referring to. Um, this, this was, uh, you have the Torah, all right? which we'll take as the whole Old Testament, but they considered the first five books of the Old Testament. And 
uh, the Pharisees and the scribes and anyone who would have followed that sect of Pharisees um, nullified that. They nullified the word of God because they were obeying the traditions of elders. Okay, so um, it, it what it was was the um, rabbis got together. They talked and went over the Torah and they debated. They had discussions. They had their own interpretation. And this became known as the extra set instead of the written word of God, which Jesus says, Moses says this, but you guys say this on top of what they had been given um, from God through Moses uh, they had these rabbis who came up with their uh, interpretations, came up with their um, other prohibitions and other things to change the written word, and it was no, known as the oral tradition. And that was handed down too. And this is what they used to um, put an effect in their, uh, you know, religious lifestyle. Um, and so let me see if I had any more information here about that. Yeah, the, um, so but, 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 <laughs> there was a lot of things that they, they would sit there and they would, would question such as like the Sabbath, you know, um, they would, they would have questions about, the rules on like let everyone you know remain where he is don't leave the, the place his place on the seventh day uh um, and so they were like that that means originally don't leave the camp to go gather uh manna you know traditionally it meant not to leave the area of the city as defined by the city walls but you know then they, so they they would question all these things and they was like well if it's this and you got this going on then we'll change it to this and this is what it means and that's why you go so the the actual law of Moses didn't even re, re, require uh, them to wash their hands it didn't say that they were defiled hands the uh, the tradition the Talmud said that they were required to do these things and to make themselves pure and make them uh, cleansed and, and whatnot. And Jesus is saying, you're upholding this oral thing, this oral standard that's been passed down above the actual written word of God that you were given from God. Therefore, you're hypocrites. Um, that becomes a problem. It becomes a problem even today. So... That's why um, now certain traditions, traditions, if you will, religious traditions is not really a problem. Tradition of a church holding the scripture, that's a good thing. Um, but when you have people claiming to re have received uh, a new or fresh word from the Lord, a revelatory type of teaching that says this that or the other that does you can't find in the written word of god okay you understand where i'm going when you have these things like these extra biblical teachings then we have teachings of men traditions of men and we're going by those things we're saying we're learning from those things and we're applying those in our lives above or equal to at the same plane as the word of god then you're following a tradition of men. You're not upholding the word of God because you're upholding the word of man. And that doesn't have authoritative uh, power in our lives. Yes, God still speaks today. He speaks to us from the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, the Holy Spirit will communicate to us, give us guidance, enlighten things, illuminate scripture, show us things. Show us application. We may even gain revelation in the sense of understanding it in a way that we hadn't seen before. Therefore, it's new, but it's there in the word. Um, but someone claiming to have a word from God 
and versus what new covenant prophecy should be um, where you can't really find it in the scripture it's not authoritative in the sense that you know this need now this needs to be written down and added to the word of god because uh through these last days god has spoken to us through who jesus it's in the bible so now that's not to be confused with prophecy that builds up edifies encourages exhorts all those things it's usually positive um um and it's not maybe not even you know it could be scripture itself but what i'm trying to say is when you have somebody say something that seems a little odd like um you're an old testament prophet with a new covenant heart um no, well no because there's no old testament prophets today because because um the law and prophets were until john john the baptist who was the last of the old testament prophets um so um, there are no Old Testament prophets with new covenant hearts because John was the last of the, the, the Old Testament prophets. So um, none of those exist unless they're over 2000 years old. And um, I think they would have died by now. So traditions of men over the word of God should not be um, upheld, should not be followed. Um, if so, there's an issue. Jesus points it out here in Mark 7, and that's what it was. It was the Talmud. It was the oral, the passed down oral tradition of the rabbis uh, that were constantly changing uh, the written word of God and the Mosaic law. And every time they accuse Jesus of breaking the law, that's what they're referring to because Jesus never broke the law. All right, there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed that. This is your little uh, drive through Bible study. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, send those to me at the Kingdom Project Podcast at gmail.com. Check us out on Facebook. Subscribe, rate, share, all that good stuff. And until next time, be a mustard seed, be leaven, and thanks for listening.